This is the uncrating of my new K40 eBay laser engraver. Uh, the box showed up with very little damage on it. Um, the only thing was this little area right here, and uh, it just seems to be on the outer shell. Uh, but for the most part, the carton is very sturdy. I already took the screws off the top, and on the inside, discovered they have it also in the box. So I opened that up and be right back. Once you open the inside of the box, they got everything packaged pretty well. Nice thick styrofoam. The accessories. This one is supposed to come with laser draw and not Moshi draw, um, and it does have the older digital or uh, analog display on it. Rather, um, unit seems very well packed. It was in a cardboard box, which is also inside the crate. Uh, had a nice thick piece of uh, styrofoam over top of it as well. So I'll get it out of the crate and see how she looks. All right, with the unit out of the box, it actually uh, seems like it's pretty decent. Uh, a little bit of scuff marks with the paint and stuff. Um, inside is your water hose, your air extractor, and the water pump. I'll get that out in a minute. I do see a limit switch on the back. I was wondering if it had one, and they also tied in the... The gantry that way it doesn't move during the shipping. There's a little bulge in the back side here, slightly cosmetic. It looks like it was probably that way because the other side matches. Could be something to do with the way they stamp it. Um, there's also a little bit of what looks like antifreeze in the tubing because it's blue. Uh, so everything back here is still screwed together. I just took it right out. So let me. Uh, Get the accessories out and see what it looks like. Screw them here that holds this shut for shipping. Uh, or probably if you don't want to mess inside there. However, I wanted to see what the wiring inside looked like. Uh, the one thing I did notice is that these buttons are a little on the loose side. However, I don't believe it's going to affect the functionality. It's just a little locking tab aren't quite strong enough to hold them. The first thing I noticed is everything's very neat inside here. Um, you see the wire loom and everything. The other thing I noticed is that I've seen some of these have a, a giant green resistor mounted to the side of the wall. This one does not have that. Uh, the one thing a lot of these have in common too, there's a grounding lug in the back. Now it's actually pigtailed into the ground receptacle. So as long as you're grounded with your three prong outlet, uh, you don't have to worry about grounding the unit separately. It wouldn't be required the power supply and this is the USB controller box here inside the laser assembly as I mentioned everything's been secured for shipping no loose parts or anything everything seems pretty well decent there's actually a uh, quality control sticker here in the side walking around back to where the laser tube stored now there is a piece of tape on top of the laser tube uh, for whatever reason I'm not a hundred percent certain um, I'll go ahead and take that off there's also a couple pieces of foam underneath it uh, so do check yours whenever you get that um, there's also a screw here that secures the lid from opening. It's just a uh, number two Phillips screw. So I'll take that out as well. On the other side of the laser, that's your first adjustment mirror. The rest will be on the inside compartment. Um, and then you can see where the water tubes run down through the bottom of the unit then come out the back. And for that, for the time being, I'll just use a five gallon bucket. The bottom of the machine, it is a little scuffed up. Uh, which I would have expected because uh, you're never going to see it. Uh, but the one thing I would like to notice is the hole in here uh, is going to be the air intake uh, from your exhaust system. So the little rubber feet underneath, you'll want to make sure that the, uh, the airflow won't be obstructed so it'll suck the fumes outside the unit. This is the back side of the unit. My unit's wired for 120 volts, uh, which is a standard uh, North American voltage. Um, you also have ground wire 
and as I mentioned earlier, those two have a uh, jumper between them. So as long as you're using uh, a three-prong outlet that is grounded, uh, it's not necessary to hook the grounding up. However, if you're not, it would be wise. Uh, and there's a picture inside the manual uh, as far as uh, connecting it to a ground. Next, you'll have the water inlet and water outlet. These are clearly marked um, with the rubber hose. And then you also have your smoke outlet, which is where the fan will sit. This is the blower assembly for the unit. Um, the assembly itself isn't real high quality, but it seems to work. Uh, one thing worth noting is that when you do plug it in, it turns on by itself. There's no separate on and off switch. However, as you saw, there is a damper on it. So once you do have it run out back, um, outside, it'll close automatically once it's mounted correctly. The hose included isn't the best quality. Uh, once you expand it, you cannot reduce it again. Um, so once you pull it out, it is what it is. However, you can replace it with a dryer hose easy, easily. The other thing worth noting, that's a square fan and a rectangular outlet. I had planned on just putting some uh, HVAC foil tape on it. Uh, however, I'm going to do the alignment first because there is an alignment port in the back side of the laser. So once I get that all aligned, I'll go ahead and seal it up. That way the unit does the extraction a little bit better. The thing I noticed when inspecting the laser tube uh, that I missed earlier was it appears that they uh, added some cardboard underneath the assembly here. Uh, probably as a shim. So I'll just keep that in mind when I do the alignment. Um, and if the alignment's way off, uh, and looks like it's pointing too high. I'll come back and remove that. Um, I don't believe it's going to cause any issues though. Um, the tube itself, um, it's in real sturdy. So This is the water pump that they include with the unit. Uh, the inlet for the laser tube will actually hook onto this and then this just fits down in here held in with pressure. Um, the one thing to note on these is you can control the flow with them. Uh, right now it's set to the maximum amount. If you close this at all It'll restrict it by closing the baffle on it. And then there's four suction cup feet at the bottom. Again, there's no separate on and off switch for this, so what I'd recommend doing is just using a surge protector or power strip so you can uh, turn them all on and off uh, together. Make sure the water is flowing through the tube before you start uh, turning the laser on. Uh, it's important to keep the tube cooled. If you don't, uh, you'll shorten the life of the tube or you actually risk burning the tube up from the heat. If you look carefully on this, you can actually see the water flowing through it um, by the air bubbles. It's also important to note that you do have to have it installed underneath the uh, device. That way you don't get an air gap inside it uh, and you'll end up trapping air inside here.